Uh, as Richard already said, my name is Fabian Sperber. Um, I started my career as a researcher at Savills Germany in, at the end of 2010. And uh, therefore, in my career, I've only seen markets going up since then. And <laughs> hopefully, I will do so in the, in, the, in the next few years as well. And uh, the chance that this might happen uh, are actually quite good. And this is what I will show you now in the next yeah, around 15 minutes or so. Um, of course, the, the German market is uh, currently in a very good condition. Um, last year, we have seen commercial transaction volume of uh, approximately 55 billion, um, which is uh, almost as high as in, in, in 2007. Um, property yields are on, on record lows at the moment, uh, and this is not least due to the Brexit decision last year. And um, this has yeah, undermined Germany's position as a, as a yeah, safe haven in Europe uh, after, after this decision. Um, I will now go through this presentation, which is uh, based on three components. It's, uh, I will talk about fundamentals first, uh, then moving on to the occupier market, and last but not least, to the, to the investment market. And I will do this for, for the office sector only. Um, uh, of course, due to the time, uh, to the time frame, which is quite short, and um, as the office segment is the most important commercial sector in Germany with a share of 40 to 45 percent each year. Um, and one last note, I will only talk about the top seven markets, uh, which are Berlin, Düsseldorf, Frankfurt, Hamburg, Cologne, Munich, and, and Stuttgart, um, as these are the, the, the main markets in Germany. So starting off with, with the fundamentals first, um, with, the, with the economy. The German economy is currently in a yeah, splendid, splendid position. As you can see, since the beginning of the 90s, we had um, only a few years with negative growth and in between that, long terms of, of actual growth. And um, currently, we are in the eighth year of consecutive growth, uh, starting in 2010. And as the, as the 2017 prediction uh, will come true, and I think we can make that assumption, um, the, the, the total growth in this, in this period will be 16.8%, which is the, the highest growth since the German reunification uh, at the beginning of the 90s. And it's, it's uh, slightly more than the eight-year growth period uh, between mid-90s and the beginning of the 2000s, and uh, significantly higher than the five-year growth period um, between 2004 and 2008. Um, just as a way of comparison, where Germany is yeah, located in the, in the European picture, um, I've put some, some figures here. So uh, the UK and France, for example, they show exactly the same growth pattern. So both countries are also in their eighth year of growth. Um, the UK with a growth figure almost as high as in Germany, France coming in at, at almost 10%. The euro area as a whole, uh, had a growth in, during this period of 7.6%, although there have been years with negative growth um, in, in these uh, last eight years. Um, same is true for the Netherlands with a growth of 7.5%, uh, Spain 2%, uh, Italy is not on here, but uh, uh, suffered negative growth. And obviously the, the Swedish people are doing a good job uh, with, a, with a growth of 21%. But overall, um, we can say that Germany is one of the, the strongest economies in, in Europe. And this has led to, uh, uh, this growth period has led to a very, very good development on the, on the German employment market with decreasing unemployment figures and uh, reached a record high in terms of, of employment. And this is especially true for the top seven markets I, I mentioned at the beginning. So moving on to the, to the, to the wider picture on the social demographic framework, I put here the development of population and, and uh, numbers of employment for these top seven markets, as well as for Germany as a whole. And as you can see that in the last five years, um, yeah, most, most, most interestingly, the growth has been quite significant of up to 5%. And this is especially true for the, for the top seven markets, which growth has been stronger than, than for Germany as a whole. Um, this development will continue in the future, but not at, a, at that pace we have, we have seen before, but at a slower pace. Um, so from 2016 to 2021 onwards, um, growth in the, in the top seven markets will continue. And 
will go, go to the future, um, as well as in Germany, we will see the growth peaking maybe in 2020, um, as the as the top seven markets will, will continue its path of path of growth. So, why am I telling you this? Because the the development of population and unemployment uh, is creating larger occupier markets, and yeah, basically speaking, every 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 employee, every office employee, um, is creating. The, the demand for new office space. And uh, this will bring us uh, to, the, to the occupier market. But first of all, the, the, the first key message here is that currently in Germany we have good fundamentals uh, in the past that have led to very good current situation. And this will also move on uh, to the future uh, in terms of both economically and in terms of the social demographics. Uh, moving on to the to the uh, occupier markets now for for the office segment for the for the top seven markets. This is the ratio of of uh, demand and supply, where where you have both it's the demand of office space and the supply of office space uh, over time. Bring it together in a ratio, and just to give you some 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 guideline, a ratio between 1.5 and 2.5 is uh, seen as as very good for both tenants and landlords, and the the markets are in a state of equilibrium. A ratio below 1.5 and especially below one um, is can be can be described as undersupply, which means that um, landlords are in a very good position, rents are rising, supply is low, uh, vacancy is low, and on the other uh, hand side we have the world of oversupply, a ratio of above 2.5. Um, where, where it's a good world for tenants, so to speak, um, with yeah, a lot of supply and, and yeah, stable or even de declining rents. <clears throat> and uh, what you can see here over time is that the German markets um, have been two times in this, in this uh, world of oversupply. So it was between probably around 2003 and six, and also between 2009 and 11, where uh, the German markets have been have been in this world of oversupply. And since then, since 2011, uh, this ratio decreased significantly. And currently, all markets are yeah, in the state of, of uh, the equilibrium or even below this threshold of 1.5. So it's just Frankfurt and Düsseldorf having a, a ratio between 1.5 and 2.5. And all other of the top seven markets um, are, in the, are below this, this threshold. And <clears throat> this became uh, the case as due to the good fundamentals mentioned before. The, the demand on the office market was very high in the last years. Um, many more office employees. Uh, and this has led uh, to uh, office space take up of more than 3.5 million square meters uh, during the last, uh, in 2016. Um, which is again uh, a record value uh, since the German reunification. <clears throat> And for 2017, we again, we see very high demand uh, and also a very high take up, but not as high as in 2016. And this is due to, to the limited supply. And this supply, on the other hand, is, is, is very scarce at the moment. So all the German markets are currently suffering very low vacancy rates, with, with Berlin being the lowest, with only 2.5% of, of vacant space. Uh, and Munich only 3.6% of vacant space at the moment. And despite this low vacancy, um, we only have, um, or this, this, despite this low vacancy, um, there isn't that much supply and new construction going on in Germany. So in 2017, there will only be 800,000 square meters of new office space coming to the market, which is the, the lowest value since the last five years, and it's way below the 10-year average. Um, as, as yeah, developers are not really keen to, to, to construct in a new, new office properties. And this has led to this um, situation of very low, very low ratios. Uh, looking a bit further into the future, we see some slightly increasing ratio levels. This, uh, construction pipeline is picking up a little bit in the future. But um, as you can see from the chart, we still expect uh, very, <clears throat> very tight markets and the the overall key message here is that we are currently in a, in a very tight market situation, which is a very good position for landlords at the moment and also in the future. Um, and this, this has been expressed like in increasing uh, rents uh, over the last years. 
Um, of course, this situation is also reflected on the investment side of the market <coughs> um, and, and, and has, has um, yeah, increased investors' interest uh, into German office properties. Um, I put here the development of the prime office yield over the long term, uh, which, which was very stable um, uh, for, uh, for, for the longer period of time. So between, I would say, 1990 and until 2011, it was just always between a range of 5 and 5.8%. Uh, but since then, the, the office yield started to, to decrease significantly, and we are currently at a level of 3.4% at the average of the German top seven markets, and we still expect this um, yield to decrease a little further until 2018, 2019. At the same period of time, um, we have seen the German government bond yield, which can be regarded as a risk-free investment with a, with a sharp decline. So uh, at the beginning of the 90s, we had like German government bonds like uh, nine percent, almost nine percent, and. It has gone basically down to zero or to nothing uh, at the end of 2016. And this means that um, when we're looking at the yield spread between <coughs> these two yield graphs, that um, the uh, office yield or office investments have become even more, more interestingly um, as the yield spread has increased from yeah, basically the, 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 the negative the negative world uh, up to 370 basis points um, in, 2000 and in 2014. And looking into the future, um, uh, forecasts are expecting increasing government bond yields as the, as the, as the turn of the globally, the turn of the interest rate um, has started. And this might also influence the development of property yields. So we expect both both property yields and the German government bond to increase. But however, the yield spread between these two will be above or around 200 basis points. And so you can earn like a risk, a risk premium for investing in German office properties of 200 basis points compared to a kind of risk-free investment um, for German government bonds. <clears throat> but as you, can, as you can imagine from, the, from this chart, yeah, the picture uh, that you're investing and the yield model um, has changed, uh, and this this is this is shown here. What I did here is a very basic yield model um, out of three components. I don't know one one is missing, unfortunately. It's, it's income return, it's the cap rate change, and it's rental growth, um, which is the which is the which is the, the, the the bright the bright blue, uh, and summing up to the total return, which is the which is the red dot. And I I put this here for two periods of time. Um, uh, the first period is 2012 to 2016, and the second period is 2017 to 2021. And <clears throat> as you can see in the former period, we had like an income return, so it's basically the office yield of 4.2% on average of the, of the markets. Um, the cap rate change, uh, as you have seen on the chart, um, has decreased, so the, the cap rate change made a significant contribution to the total return of over 5%. And on top of that was the rental growth, um, which, is, which was also quite high during that period, um, which, which brings us to the total return of 12.4% of, uh, during that period of time. And the, the cap rate change made the most significant contribution of over 40% to the total return in this period. <clears throat> As the office yields has decreased and are now at a very low level and are only slightly decreasing anymore and start, will start to increase again, the yield model has changed. So we still have a, the income return, which is the office yield of at 3.4% at the moment. We have rental growth, which is slowing down, but it's still there at 1.2%. And the, the cap rate change is contributing in a negative way as the yields will start to increase from 2019, 2020 onwards, which brings us to a total return of only 3.8% uh, for that period of time. However, I would say that, and this is, this is the, the, the third key message here, that investment into German office properties is still a good buy. Um, it's, it's a risk premium of, of more than 300 basis points at the moment. It's a total return of 3.8%. Of, uh, and this, this also can be seen in the, in the high demand 
four German office properties. For 2017, we expect a new record volume, volume in Germany at around 60 billion for total commercial. And office will again have a, have a big share in this of 40 to 45%. So what should you take home from this? Um, on this from this key presentation it's just the the three key messages good fundamentals in germany in terms of both on the social economic uh, and, and demographic side um, in the past and in the future it's hot occupier markets due to this good fundamentals and um, yeah very low vacancy rates and still increasing rents and it's still a good a good view for or a good opportunity to invest in, in german office properties um, as total return is at almost 4% and you can earn a yield spread um, of more than 200 basis points compared to, uh, compared to the German government bonds. Thanks for listening.